Good morning. Welcome to my channel. Welcome to my home. I'm Jason. I'm gonna be uh, trying something new here with uh, this vlog and uh, gonna have a, have a lot to do today and I was like, you know what, no time like the present to get started. I've been playing on this project for years and you know, just gotta get, gotta get, get up and get going. So today we're gonna be, I have some pieces soaking in laundry upstairs. The laundry is really what started everyone wanting me to make videos in the first place. I used to do them on Instagram. And there we get our most views and hits. So um, I have some pieces upstairs soaking. So we're going to go check out those, rinse those off. I have a Victorian dress that um, we cleaned with our Morphe soak. So uh, I'm going to pull that out as well and see how that came. Um, and then we're going to head to today. Um, the lighting's nice, but. Looks like it's gonna be a stormy day today. So it's a Sunday, lazy Sunday. I'm gonna head into the workroom um, and work on some of our bias piano shawl gowns. The, um, they have some color bleeding. So I went and picked up some supplies and some paints. Um, I'm gonna try some experimental painting techniques on these silks. So we'll go through that. Uh, I'll show you guys the workroom and we'll, uh, preview some of the Isimiyake collection that's going to be headed to Art Basel next week, uh, gearing up for, for that. So yeah, cheers. Let's we'll start this journey together and we'll see how it goes. Uh, I'll check back in once this is in my bloodstream. So here we are, on to coffee number two. It is Sunday after all. And I have you in my, my dirty laundry room. There's many, many things for us to clean. I'll give you, give you guys a little taste of, of uh, the unglamorous backside of uh, vintage clothes. This is this amazing dragon robe. Um, how cool is that? Still got to get him cleaned. Plenty of wearing that at Art Basel. This is one of my handkerchief dresses. This is some 40s rayon. These are some 20s beach pants that needed to be worked on. Um, let me set the camera down and uh, show you a couple more things. Here we have one of my lace dresses. Goes like this. It's this beautiful hand embroidered linen cutout work. And then we reworked it onto a, a full skirt here. And this has been drying put this in the soak for two days. It had just general, you know, 120 plus years of grime um, and um, a couple stains on it. So a customer in the store spilled their coffee and uh, <laughs> they had a coffee stain all the way down it. So, you know, that's the, the perils of retail, but unlike with most contemporary brands, they end up just damaging out the product and throwing it away and then ended up being in a landfill. We actually clean and repair things here because what we do we, is for keeps. We believe in heirlooms. Is that we, did, we, we believe in heirlooms. We believe in um, the quality over quantity here. Um, a couple holes did open up. That does happen. Um, but this fabric, um, because of the age, you know, it is totally wearable, but it is, it is delicate. So there's, there's, um, sometimes when you have a stain that's really old and oxidized, you'll end up with a little hole. 
So there's, there's a couple pinholes, but that's just the nature of um, this beautiful fabric. Um, so that's nice and clean now. But this is what we're working on now. I have a bin of crochet dresses sitting here in the soak. And then I also have a pair of uh, acid wash jeans for myself. <laughs> um, and those are being held down just by some detergent. Um, let me... So these have been in here for 24 hours. And you can see the water has gotten quite, quite dirty. <clears throat> so, however, the colors are still just as vibrant and amazing as when they're made. So these are these these doily dresses. A whole collection of these we're going to be showing at Art Basel. So I'm just getting them all nice and clean. This is a cute one. So I'm just going to go through these, give them a rinse, um, check any of the spots where I saw some stains. Um, and then I'm going to dump, dump out the water, the soapy water, and then individually hand rinse each dress under the faucet and, uh, get all the soapy suds out. And, um, then they should be nice and clean now because they're, the because the crochet, um, is kind of a knit. It's, it's a lace, um, but there's no warp or weft to the fabric. So there's no straight grain, um, which is where uh, fabric and garments have their strength and stability. So that when I'm, the reason I'm saying that is because a garment that is wove, uh, you know, cut on the straight grain can hang to dry and, it's, and uh, it won't stretch out because there is no stretch to the fibers. Uh, unlike a bias, uh, which is where the grain is cut on the diagonal, if you hang it to dry, the fibers completely stretch out and you end up with this, like, it's, you lay those flat to dry. So it's the same thing with the crochet. These all need to be um, laid flat to, to dry. The thing is, is I have so many of them, um, I do not have that much place space here in my my house so we're still working on the laundry laundry area in our atelier um so what i'm going to do is i'm actually just going to fold these in half and hang them on the hanger that way so that way the bodice and straps don't get stretched out and then i'll take them into the atelier and i'll lay them all out flat um uh to dry uh, over the over the day so yeah let's let's get to rinsing If I had the drain open. <laughs> Oh. <sighs> 
Never important coffee sip. Okay. Now here we go. So again, these were soaked on cold. So I'm just gonna rinse them on cold. You know what? Dun 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 dun. dun, dun. Uh, a little peep show for you guys. Excuse me. Let me get all soaking wet here. Okay, let's get white. So now, these are cotton. So, I could have gone hot if I wanted. Um, we have a pin. Um, but usually I want to keep everything on cold or like a room temperature, just tap water temperature, um, because heat sets stains. Um, and I, I think for, like, you know, when you die, you know, you need hot water. So when you want to remove things from the textiles, you want to open them up, you want it cold. So as you can see, these are really stretchy, so we're really not going to hang these to dry. So it's going to need to set. Let's give them a really nice rinse, all the pretty colors, the little flowers. At the end of the video, I'll add a little, um, I'll add a few, I think some pins in here still. I'm bleeding. At the end of the video, I'll post some videos and pics of these dresses as we're making them um, on the mannequins, so you can see how that how they were going. But um, yeah, so again, just like I said, so these are cotton. Um, the doilies are they're probably mid-century, um, some probably back to the 1940s, uh, but pretty much mostly, you know, from the 50s, 60s. Um, uh, not so much 70s, we, uh, I like the older fibers, the older cottons, um, they're softer. So here we've got a spot that didn't exactly come out in my soak. Um, so what I'm going to do there is, uh, if I can reach it. So sure how this is supposed to go about with uh, branded copyrighted products, but here's a free commercial for, for them anyway. So I have my uh, spot treater here. So I like to spot treat both before and after um, washing because you never know how stubborn a stain is going to be. Oh, that's that's coming right out. That's lifting right out. Um, especially because I'm working with vintage and working with old things, like I was just saying, you know, some of these doilies are 50 years old. These stains could be 50 years old too. Um, so when you soak the cotton, um, for 24 hours, the fibers open up. Um, they, they, uh, they get weaker, which is again, why you have to be like gentle with your scrubbing. Um, and why some holes, you might end up with some holes, like with the Victorian piece. <clears throat> um, but, uh, so what I'm doing here is, I don't know if you can see, but that spot's gone now. It was right here. So just a little spritz, psh, 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 and then, um, kind of like rubbing it on itself like this. Uh, like I was saying, this, these are 50 years old, but like, that's not really old. Um, so there's, there's still strong, sturdy, thick you know, utilitarian kind of cotton. Um, so yeah, let me just see if she's got any more spots. I think she's okay. Oh, that got really nice and clean. 
So I'm just gonna put the water back on. And give another rinse. Um, but yeah, so I like to spot treat after soaking um, because the fibers have opened up and you can now get the grime out from between the cracks. Uh, if you look at that, oops. I just sat in the water. I'm gonna get in trouble for copyrights. So yeah, this one's, this one's about mostly rinsed. Let's go on to the next. This dress, um, I don't remember it having any specific spots, but I guess I should give it a once over. This one is was more of an ecru and cream. Break in the back. <clears throat> okay. There's some further boobs. Another pin. So we just start at the top and work our way down. And um, I don't wring anything, I don't twist. Um, because again, like I said, when you have the fibers wet, they're a little weaker. Um, so I just using physics, just squeeze and it sucks the water in and squeeze it out and it sucks it in and that is enough rinsing power. The pin just pokes me on. Where that pin went? Then I go down, you know, go down the line of the whole dress.
And there we are finished. Lots and lots of rinsing. All these beautiful ladies. Now we go lay them out to dry. Now, before I head off to the atelier, I have one last dress, actually, I wanna get in the soak. This one is made with 1940s and 50s handkerchiefs and some old doilies as well. So I'm gonna use our, um, our, our product, Morphe Soak here. This is obviously in beta testing still. And um uh, oh, it's gonna pretty much done. It's gonna be all the packaging so good. So I have um this bin. Um it's, uh, looks dirty, but that's actually just dirt on the outside of the bin. Um uh, I have a couple gallons probably in there, it's probably about three inches. Um so I I, I don't really measure this out, I just kind of like this is a, a very gentle lifting agent. Um, that's about enough. Um, also because this dress isn't really that dirty, I just wanna bring some of the sparkle back to it so the colors can be as vibrant and pretty as these. So put that in. Um, this is again just tap, uh, tap water temperature, um, coldish. Room, really just room temperature water. Just move around, get the particles to integrate. And then we get the dress. I'll do this one handed. Okay, so I take the dress and just kind of lay her down. And then there's no stains or anything on this, so it doesn't need any scrubbing or any spot treating. Just gonna get it wet, move it around so that the soap can kind of squish through the fibers. And yeah, just make sure she's fully submerged. Now this dress isn't that isn't that soiled, so I'm probably just going to let this sit all day, probably for about 10 to 12 hours. 
and when I get home, uh, give it a rinse then. And it wouldn't be a fashion vlog if I didn't give you a daily fit rundown. Uh, it's just a casual day doing work in the atelier by myself, but you never know when you're gonna get caught dead, you know? Got some crazy cool camo boots on, vintage Hawaiian, and uh, just keeping it casual. But like I said, you never know what you're gonna get caught dead in. It's always got good boots. Okay, let's go get her done. It's wet out there, but we are here in the workroom and uh, need to find a spot to lay these ladies out to dry. And uh, then we get to working on some other pretty things. So here we are, I'm gonna be laying them out. table. Just nice and flat, like you would a sweater. is a fan of blue and white. <clears throat> it's just such a crisp, clean look. This one's a bit bigger. This one's an extra large and it has sleeves. So, So once these dry, they're all going to need to be steamed. Steamed and shaped. Oh, even after all that, we got another pin. Quilt scraps. We're also working on some quilt dresses here. These cute little baby dolls. I'll give you guys a look at those coming soon. Oh, bottom of the bin. This one's still a little wet. Don't ring it again, just squeeze it. Go. All our little ladies 
lined up in a row. Also have some vintage jewelry. This is gonna be coming to our basil. So we always have many things going on. Let me give you a look at our little quilt dresses that we're working on here. Cutie patooties. So yeah, let me get set up for the piano shawl dresses, which we're gonna be painting. I have my mannequin here. I'm actually gonna have to wrap her in plastic first to keep the mannequin nice and clean. Of course, we keep it padded because real women have curves. Um, and then these are some of the glamorous beauties that we'll be playing with today. Okay, cool. Let me set the camera in, set, set the camera up and. Uh... So to protect my mannequin, you need some cellophane. Learned this trick back when I did ballroom dance costumes. They're all made of mesh, and uh, we would glue to straight to the dress, the, the crystals, and the glue would go through the mesh, but it wouldn't stick to cellophane. So it's a trick we learned back then. So I get the first uh, first kind of layer on, it's a little soft. Now I don't want to squish my padding, but I do want to keep it tight. so that I don't have any excess bulk uh, from the, uh, the wrap. And here, go soft across the butt. And then I'm gonna pull it tight up under the butt. Nice and tight across the front. Let's get bottom totally done. I've never played with fabric paint before. So then here I have my nicely padded and wrapped mannequin. Mostly smooth. Get a dress on her. So this is our, um, I've been making these dresses for 20 years. I made my first piano shawl dress back in uh, 1999, it would have been. It was black and white back then. And um, I actually cut all the fringe off. I made that one with a big full chiffon skirt. I, I kept some fringe up on the top, like on the sleeves. So I'm taking off the hanger straps. So yeah, we've been making these for years and everyone's a little different because they're all engineered and how they drape based off the weight of the shawls and the placement of the flowers. So each dress is one of a kind. We, um, Emily Radjikowski, 
Lebowski has worn a couple of them. She's a fan. Get some paints going here. that's supposed to make it work on fabric. So let's see how this goes. Maybe I should use the brush to mix it, but we'll see. thick and I really wanted like a watercolor look. Oh, we got a mess. Hold on, let me get some paper towels. So as you can see, the problem here is the color has bled all over. So we're going to try some sort of, we're going to play with that. We're going to try to do some sort of tie-dye. First, I think I'm just going to get it wet. I need a bigger sponge. I think we're going to need a bigger sponge. I wonder if the whole dress should actually just be like soaking wet. Not that bad. Well, it's kind of pretty. Giving it like rosy hues under there. I think the the trick with this is to be heavy-handed. some sort of tie-dye effect happening here. Come in with some peach. a little bit of 
Blendy blend with the water. I don't think I had that paint watered down enough in the first place. I think my first color was better being a little more wet. Let's try this dark color. I guess it'd be fun if you could see what I was doing, huh? Bring this out this way. dripping everywhere, but I guess it's helping with the flow. Going for just a weird arty tie-dye vibe. Now, I made a mistake. I didn't get this blue color. I got like a teal green. So I'm not sure if I want to incorporate that or if I just want to keep playing with the pinks. What's strange is when I get it wet, it's like these hidden colors are showing up underneath the fabric that I didn't see when it was dry. Call this, can we see that here? Here we are, this is where I'm working. I think this wet is better. And when I get a little too much, I can just blot.
So I'm gonna try my first experiment here with uh, stop motion videography, and uh, uh, I'm gonna get at this. Uh, probably gonna take a few hours to get it done, so stick with, let's see how this goes, and fast forward it for you guys, and yes, you'll, uh, should hopefully should see something a little more finished soon. So we're here, um, it's been probably about four or five hours, and now we have a tie-dye situation. Let's see how it comes out when it dries. Um, not sure if I want it darker or lighter, but well, we'll see. I think I'm going to do um, dark blue on the fringe, like a dip dye. So. Yeah, kind of came out kind of nice, just kind of pinky. Maybe I should have just gone solid pink. We'll see. Cool. Well, I have to go get the pink off my hands and clean up all these brushes and uh, get back and do some copy for our website about our new wallpapers that we're going to be launching. Um, that'll be a fun video to show you guys. But um, yeah, I hope uh, yeah, today was fun. If you guys are interested in what we're up to here, let me know in the comments if uh, whatever uh, anyone wants to see more of or less of. Um, and uh yeah cool stay tuned subscribe so you can uh, follow along the journey and um let's see where we go with this okay cool take care bye so the dresses are drying nicely and the colors look gorgeous vibrant and clean Morphe Soak really did its job. Can't wait to see these on some real, real girls. It's gonna be fun down in Miami. Another thing I promised I'd show you guys was a little taste of the Isimiyaki collection that we're gonna be bringing. Well, we have this whole slew of purses. So we have over 200 pieces of clothing from this one woman's collection. And so, of course, she had all the bags to mix and match and go with all the outfits. So, I mean, this is just the amount of bags we have here. Look at these cool how they pleat up. See this little, this little thing here actually a bag. How cool is that, right? Fun. So yeah, a little Miyake taste coming to Miami. Okay, back to the uh, back to the house now so that I can check on the other laundry that we left soaking. <laughs> 